I'm starting this with my countertop drawn to finish size. It's already mirrored and I've already set it on the material layer so we can watch it in simulation and accurately place it on the pods when we machine it on the Titan. I'm using this yellow dash line to represent the cabinets. This also helps define the area that we want to mill or surface. I'll be using a programming cycle called Open Pocket with Boundary. This is normally on our machining tab if it's turned on, which more than likely it's not if you haven't used it before, like in my case. We can turn it on by going to Add-in and Macros and then going to choose Add-ins. We'll expand Machine under the Free Options side where we'll find Open-Ended Pocket Machining. Check it and then choose OK to turn it on. Now we should be able to go to the Machine tab and find it on our toolbar. This cycle requires two pieces of geometry, a boundary and an open shape. An open shape will define which edge to run the tool against and the boundary will be a containment line. I can use my material which is closed for the boundary. I'm just going to draw a line on the edge of my cabinet for my open shape. I'll start at this endpoint and then go all the way across to this intersection of these two lines. So next I need to apply tool direction to this line so the tool will stay on this side. I'll choose tool direction and then I'll use my common settings for an open shape. Left, reverse, and no. I'll select my line and verify that the arrow is on the correct side before I close. Next we need to go select a tool. For this example I'm going to be using a gauge wheel. Take note of the diameter of the tool that you're selecting. Typically, we'll use half or less than half the tool diameter for the width of the cut. Double click on the name to select it and click once in the drawing to activate it. And now we can select Open Pocket using Boundary. And on this first page, we'll see it's the first operation. We'll see the tool that we've chosen. We'll set our compensation to Tool Center and then our XY corners will set to straight. Then we can click OK to go to the next page where we'll find our Z levels. I'm going to set my safe rapid level to 5, my rapid down to 2, and I'll set my material top to 1.2 inches for my 3CM material. And the final depth, which is very important, I will set to what I want the thickness of the material to become. I'll set this to 1.1 for this example. So if my material was really 1.2 inches thick, I would ultimately be removing 0.1 of an inch. Number of cuts means how many passes in the Z level. And since I'm taking off such a small amount, I'll leave it set to one pass. We've noticed that in the tooling information section of this page that the down feed and cut feed sometimes differ from the tool that we've selected. So double check them and change them accordingly. In this machining section, we want zero stock to be left. We want the cutter to go right up against this line. The value in the width of cut is half of the tool's diameter that we selected. We only want to use half of, or less than half of, our tool's width. And if we wanted, we could make the width of the last pass smaller. Flood is checked as it should be. The gap at boundary setting controls how far away the tool is from the edge of the part when it lowers. I'm going to make this a little larger number so the tool lowers further away from the edge of the part. And then when we click OK, we'll be asked to select our open geometry, which is the line that we set tool direction on. And then we'll be asked to select the boundary, which will be our closed outside perimeter. In my case, the material layer. 
you might also see this little message. It should read, the width of cut is greater than or equal to the tool radius. So I'm just going to OK this for now to apply our cut paths. I'll often get extra tool paths, which are pretty easy just to go up and delete. And if I turn on my toolpath arrows, I can change the direction of every other cut so the tool goes back and forth. I'll choose Edit Machining and then Reverse Toolpath to select every other one before I finish. And now I can run it in simulation. We'll see at the lead in that the tool drops down far away from the part the two and a half inches that we set at gap at boundary. And I also see that I didn't delete too many tool paths and my overhang is completely milled. Therefore, we've made a good program. This cycle can also mill multiple edges. We just need to draw our open geometry to follow. So I'll just draw two lines along this edge. All open geometries must be joined together and the geometries have to have tool direction set. Then we can select the tool that we're going to use before we select our open boundary cycle. And I'll be using most of the settings that I used before. Remember to double check your feeds. And then this time, I'm going to change my width of cuts to slightly less than the radius of the tool. And again, I'll increase the gap at boundary. And then I'll click OK to select the open shape first and then the boundary. I can delete any extra cuts and change the tool direction if I wish before I run simulation and send my program to the machine. Thank you for choosing Park Industries.